Uh, good morning, welcome everyone to uh, this year's annual research conference. Uh, we're, we're delighted to, uh, to welcome you here. Uh, we're going to start with recorded remarks by the managing director, uh, followed by uh, remarks by uh, Gita Gopinath, and then we will transition directly to the, to the first session. Uh, so uh, please settle in and welcome. Good morning and welcome to the 23rd Jacques Pollack Annual Conference in which we will focus on the global economy, looking back, moving forward. This year's conference is also extra special because we honor Maurice Opsfeld's contributions to economic policy and research. Maurice's time at the Fund left a lasting imprint one that helped us move forward through enhancing our reputation for delivering high quality research and by stepping up the fund's contribution to policy debate. Under his stewardship, the fund's economic research continued to set the standard in its field. And in the short time I have, I could not possibly do justice to all the full spectrum of his accomplishments. I, for that, we would need a whole new conference. But to get us started, let me highlight a few of his many achievements at the Fund. Under his leadership, the World Economic Outlook was the seminal reference in terms of global forecasts and, importantly, in identifying interconnections and possible spillovers, an important step in transforming our multilateral surveillance in a more shock-prone world. The external sector report reflected his powerful intellect and raised the fund's profile as the only international institution that provides an objective, comprehensive and multilaterally consistent assessment of exchange rates and external imbalances. Maury was also instrumental in bringing climate research to the fund before it became fashionable among economists. He co-authored a book on coping with the climate crisis that synthesized the key insights of climate change economics in an accessible way and his contributions on the discussion of the euro area fiscal rules were also vital as he advocated for further integration of Europe's economic and monetary union by supporting the need for a fiscal union. Overall, Mori has challenged us to broaden our horizon on a range of issues critical to the macroeconomic landscape. And in doing so, he has helped ensure that the fund remains as relevant today as when it started. Maurice's academic contributions are also vast and profound. He is the co-author of the textbooks in international macroeconomics over the past three decades, Foundations of International Macroeconomics with his fellow former chief economist of the fund, Ken Rogoff, and international economics theory and policy with Paul Krugman and Mark Melitz. He has also extensively written on highly relevant policy topics, including global external imbalances, financial crisis, exchange rates, monetary policy. It is not an understatement to say that all of us here today are students of Mori. And in teaching us, he has equipped us with the power to look back and assess how we move forward. And with that, let me turn to the theme of this year's conference. Since we last met, the global economy has been hit by one shock after another the implications of Russia's war in Ukraine, the lingering pandemic weighed heavily on the global economic outlook, 
affecting lives and creating challenges for policymakers. Inflation is at multi-decade high, with rising food and energy prices, persistent supply chain disruptions, and mounting debt vulnerabilities. Financial conditions are tightening, while capital flows and exchange rate volatility have increased dramatically. And this is especially concerning for low- and middle-income countries as they face all these challenges coupled with financing constraints and limited access to markets. This leaves us with a particularly challenging set of questions for how we move forward. First and foremost, inflation. Arguably the biggest and immediate challenge for central banks in both advanced and emerging market economies is to bring inflation down. We see central banks tightening monetary policy to restore price stability. And although there is a broadly an agreement among central banks that monetary policy should stay the course, Questions related to how to manage the monetary tightening cycle remain open. Next, the policy mix. Alongside monetary policy, how to formulate and calibrate responsible fiscal policy in an environment with persistent price pressures. Although the priority must be to protect vulnerable households with targeted measures to alleviate the impact of rising food and fuel prices, it should not be done in a way that further fuels inflation or sidetracks the efforts of monetary policy. Public debt burdens are another challenge. Recent data shows that about 60% of low income and about 25% of emerging market economies are in or at high risk of debt distress. At this juncture, every fin finance minister is seeking to fine-tune fiscal policy to ensure the appropriate support to the vulnerable while preserving a credible fiscal framework and a sustainable debt profile over the medium term. And finally, we should not forget the most daunting challenge of our times. How do we make sure that we sow the seeds for a green and more resilient future? Our analysis suggests that we can expect more volatile climate events, especially damaging for low-income countries, if we allow carbon emissions to continue unabated. And that would have direct implications on many levels but in particular for food security through agricultural output. And while there are strong voices for addressing climate change, we need a deep understanding of the global economic impacts of climate shocks and even stronger voices for action. We will touch on many of these issues over the coming two days, and this will be vital opportunity to learn from the analytical work that will be presented and debated here. And what we take away from the conference can be a roadmap for the future. I very much regret that I'm speaking to you from this screen. I'm not there in person, but I'm thrilled that you gather together and I have no doubt you will make this event a great success. I wish you all the best for the next two days of this conference. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's great to see many of you here in person. This is fantastic. So let me please add my welcome to the 23rd Jacques Pollock Annual Research Conference. Uh, this is taking place in person after three years, so that makes it extra special. And it's also really special because this is a conference where we are celebrating Maury's contribution to the field of economics in honor of his 70th birthday. 
As you all know, Mori is known around the globe for his work on international economics, and he's clearly one of our profession's most influential macroeconomists. But he's also special to us at the fund because of his leadership of the research department uh, and being chief economist uh, at the fund, preceding when I came over. Uh, and he is known for having mentored many economists uh, at the fund that I keep running into all the time. I'd like to first start by saying my own personal thanks to Maury. Maury has had a tremendous influence on my personal journey as an economist. Way back in the summer of 1997, I don't know if you remember this, Maury, but when I was a graduate student in Princeton, uh, I got to work on the solution manual for your uh, book, the book that uh, uh, Crystalina mentioned, The Foundations of Macroeconomics, uh, that you co-authored with Ken. And really thankful for that opportunity. Uh, it was great getting to know Maury because you could see his tremendous scholarship, but also his incredible patience and his kindness uh, when working with him. So that was phenomenal. And then when I moved on to become a professor, when I was teaching Maury's papers, it was like part of my daily life. And when I took over as chief economist again, at that time, I was taking over for Maury, and he was exceptionally gracious with his time in helping me prepare for the transition and advising me on all the things I needed to do. So thank you for all of that, uh, Mari. Everybody knows that Mari is a prolific researcher, but let me just highlight a few of his most influential works. The first is Mari's work on self-fulfilling currency crisis, which was at the core of the so-called second generation currency crisis models. The first generation crisis models are owed to a Krugman, which was about a currency crisis that comes about because of inconsistent policies. Uh, but what Mari showed us was that you, do, you don't need inconsistent policies. You could also have multiple equilibria, and you could end up with a currency crisis because of self-confirming pessimism. In addition to that work on currency crisis, uh, Mori did very influential work with Ken Rogoff on building the new open economy macro framework and a relative just Mandel Fleming, uh, this framework introduced dynamics, it introduced intertemporal optimization, you could think of what uh, welfare maximization would give you, uh, and therefore you know, a lot of researchers went off, including me, went off to write many papers on uh, how fiscal and monetary policy should work in this new, uh, in this new framework. And lastly, but not, of course not, not least, Mori was among the first to stress the risks of global imbalances, uh, particularly in light of growing complexity of financial markets. Uh, importantly for the fund, I should also say that Mori's research has repeatedly made the case for flexible exchange rates. His work remains as relevant today as it was when it was originally written, and his curiosity, his encyclopedic erudition, and dedication to challenging our understanding of economic phenomena continue to inspire us to broaden our perspective on issues critical to macroeconomics. So let me now just say a few words on the theme of this year's conference. Kristalina already highlighted this in her remarks. I'm just going to add a couple of points to it in terms of the challenges that policymakers face and that there's really a very narrow path to get things right. So there's really no scope for missteps in the current environment. So in terms of the challenges, I'm going to add to the list that Kristalina went through. One is the strengthening of the dollar, which is at its highest level in over 20 years. Uh, and given the dominance of the dollar in trade and finance, and that's the first uh, session that we're having today, uh, you know, such, when you have such a sharp tightening of the strengthening of the dollar, it obviously has very important macro macroeconomic implications for countries. Second, there are concerns with financial fragility from what could be lying in some corners of the broader financial system, including hidden leverage in non-bank financial institutions that are outside of the regulatory per perimeter and where, and where data is critically lacking. So therefore, policymakers need to keep a watchful eye on potential vulnerabilities and ensure that the plumbing of the financial system is up to task when stress arises and if liquidity provision is needed. Another challenge, and I'm going to leave you with that, is 
the risk of geoeconomic fragmentation. If you look at data on global trade, any measure of trade to GDP, looks like nothing is happening. It seems fairly quiet. But if you look at the rumblings in the policy space, you listen to the rumblings in the policy space, I think the pandemic, and especially the war, has significantly raised the risks of economic fragmentation. Now, that doesn't mean that trade as a whole might collapse, but we certainly are going to redraw the, the map, the global trade map, in terms of who trades with whom, uh, and the implications of that for productivity, for efficiency, for employment, and every other variable that we care about. So we're seeing tensions grow over trade, investment, technology transfer, and national security concerns have been growing over many years, uh, undermining growth and trust in the current global economic system. Since the war in Ukraine started, our monitoring indicates that around 30 countries have restricted trade in food, energy, and other key commodities. Improving cooperation and the constructive resolution of disputes is a key challenge and priority ahead of us. So the sessions in this conference will shed light on many of these important issues. We have a very exciting lineup of novel research. Uh, at the IMF, we care a lot about research and new ideas and how they can be, importantly, how can they can, it can be applied to improve uh, global prosperity. We've assembled a fantastic set of panelists, presenters, and discussants, uh, and I expect their presentations will generate a lot of food for thought and, be, uh, and contribute to the work of our own work program at the IMF. So with that, I'm going to just hand over to the first session chair, who is Chela Pasar Basioglu, who is the director of the Strategy, Policy, and Review Department. And I wish everybody an insightful and rewarding conference.